In today's video, we're going to be talking about fluoxetine or Prozac. And this is in response to one of our viewers who asked us to make a video about this medication. If you would like us to make a video specifically for you, go ahead and drop the idea in the comment section below as our goal is to help impact you and your mental health care journey. So without further ado, here we go. The first thing you need to know about fluoxetine is what is fluoxetine? Well, fluoxetine was the first second generation antidepressant that came out in the United States in 1987. And it revolutionized the antidepressant market as the first generation antidepressants, the tricyclics and the MAOYs were not very well tolerated as the side effects were awful and they increased risk of death when taken in overdose. So many providers stayed away from prescribing treatments for depression. But when fluoxetine came out and was found to be a lot safer than the first generation antidepressants, it created this shift in the treatment of depression, where now many providers were comfortable prescribing fluoxetine for patients to help them with their depressive symptoms, including primary care providers. So you could just go to your family care provider and get a prescription for fluoxetine, which created a culture shift in the 90s. And with target marketing, changed the view of the American dream to be able to obtain happiness in a pill. So if you're interested in this type of history of fluoxetine or Prozac, I have a link in the description on a documentary that you'll find very interesting. So moving on, fluoxetine is an SSRI or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, very similar to sertraline, which I cover in this video. And it has actions on many serotonin receptors. However, its antagonist reaction on the serotonin receptor 5-HT2C has stimulating or activating effects due to the fact that it can increase norepinephrine and dopamine. And in higher dosages, so greater than 60 milligrams, it's actually a weak norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, increasing its activating properties. Also, fluoxetine and other SSRIs are shown to be anti-inflammatory, which is very important in the treatment of depression because inflammation has been shown to be a cause of depression, which I cover in this video that talks about all the changes that happen in the brain with depression. The second thing you should know about fluoxetine is what is it used for? Well, you guessed it. Fluoxetine is FDA approved to treat the symptoms of major depressive disorder and specifically very useful for targeting those symptoms of lethargy or being very fatigued and tired, having what's called a blunted affect or really not being able to be motivated or getting out of bed. Fluoxetine is very beneficial due to those activating properties. However, it's also FDA approved for the treatment of obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder, bulimia, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, and when combined with olanzapine, an atypical antipsychotic, it's actually approved for the treatment of bipolar depression and treatment resistant depression. It also has some off-label uses such as social anxiety disorder, PTSD, binge eating disorder, and more recently, due to those anti-inflammatory properties, it's actually being used to help reduce the symptom severity of COVID-19. So the third thing is, how long does it take before it works? Well, just like other antidepressants, this isn't a miracle drug and it doesn't start working right away. But fluoxetine tends to work a little more quickly than the other antidepressants. As generally speaking, it'll take about two to four weeks before you start to see improvement in your symptoms. However, some patients need 
four to six weeks before they start seeing symptom improvement. Now, if you're on a therapeutic dose, which is anywhere from like 20 to 60 milligrams, and you're still not having any improvement after eight weeks of being on this medication, then you need to have some change in your regimen or augmentation of your treatment, which could be maximizing the dose to 80 milligrams, changing the medication altogether, or adding another medication to help boost the effects of fluoxetine. However, this should all be done under the direction of your mental health care provider, of course. Then once your symptoms have been remitted or once your symptoms have resolved, it's advised that you stay on fluoxetine for at least six months. Which brings us to the fourth thing that you should know about fluoxetine, which is can it be addicting or is this medication addicting? If I'm going to be on it for six months or longer, can I just come off of this medication? Well, none of the antidepressants are addicting. None of the antidepressants cause you to crave the medication, to seek for higher dosages of the medication, or want more and more and more until you can't get enough. It does not cause addiction. However, your body does get used to that increased serotonin level. And so just abruptly stopping an antidepressant can cause like a serotonin abstinence syndrome, which I cover in that video on Sertraline. However, with fluoxetine, this rarely happens. And that is because fluoxetine is very unique in the fact that it has a long half-life, meaning it stays in your system for a very long time. It can stay in your system for weeks. And in doing so, it actually self tapers or tapers itself out of your system. So most people will not have an abstinence syndrome or a withdrawal effect from fluoxetine. Well, I say most because there are some patients who will still experience some of these withdrawal effects. So that's why you should never abruptly stop taking any medication and discuss it with your provider so that it can be done safely. Which takes us to the fifth thing or the fifth and final thing that you need to know about fluoxetine, which is the side effects and drug interactions. Now, because fluoxetine stays in your system for so long, you have to be very careful about drug interactions, specifically if you're switching from fluoxetine to another antidepressant, your mental health care provider will do so very cautiously and probably start you on another antidepressant at a very low dose and then titrate or increase that dose to a therapeutic dose, but do it more slowly because that fluoxetine will still be in your system. Also, you shouldn't switch from fluoxetine to the MAOYs or that first generation um, antidepressant because it can actually cause serotonin syndrome. And so it's advised that you stop fluoxetine for at least five weeks before switching to one of those types of medications. Now, when it comes to drug interactions, fluoxetine does have a lot of drug interactions, which is why many providers will hesitate to prescribe it if you're taking a lot of medications. And these drug interactions are the result of fluoxetine being an inhibitor of two different metabolic substrates, which a lot of medications get metabolized by. And so being an inhibitor of these substrates, it actually causes toxic levels or high levels of these medications in your system. And this list of medications is just an example of a lot of the medications that fluoxetine can have interactions with, but it's not comprehensive by any means because there are many other medications that are metabolized by those enzymes. And so therefore it is important once again to talk to your mental health care provider to discuss possible drug interactions. And so now you're probably wondering, like everybody else, are there any side effects? 
Well, of course there are side effects. There are side effects to any medication, including Tylenol. So fluoxetine is no different. And because of those stimulating properties or those activating properties of fluoxetine, the most common side effects will be insomnia, anxiety, agitation, dry mouth. You may also experience headache, dizziness, increased sweating, a decrease in appetite, which some people don't mind, some nausea, a little discomfort in the stomach or some diarrhea, and unfortunately, decreased libido or decreased sexual arousal may occur. But just keep in mind that when you have major depressive disorder, this can also be a symptom of depression. And if you're experiencing this symptom, then talk about it with your provider because there are things you can do to help lessen the impact of this potential side effect. And also keep in mind that a lot of these side effects will pass after taking the medication for about a week as your body adjusts to it. Now, there are many other rare and dangerous side effects to this medication and other antidepressants, which I covered in this video. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that video out. So there you have it. Those are the top five things you need to know about fluoxetine. Is there anything else that you would like to add to that list? Go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Are there other medications that you would like us to cover or talk about? Put that in the comment section below as well, because again, we want to help you on your mental health care journey. I thank you for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.